once relatively unknown outside Asia, jackfruit, has seen its demand increase worldwide. And this restaurant here in Hong Kong uses it as a whole plant alternative to pork or lamb. And they, like many others in the city, are seeking to add more plant-based meats to their menu. So across Asia, a growing number of startups are working to meet that demand. One is Singapore-based Karana. Founded in 2018, the company sources jackfruit from Sri Lanka as the key ingredient in their whole plant alternative to pork. So it's a highly efficient crop, in fact, that doesn't require heavy fertilizers. We've developed a proprietary process that enhances that texture, but whilst retaining the whole plant nature of the ingredient. In its original form, jackfruit can take up to five hours to cook which they say makes it a tricky ingredient to scale up for commercial production. Karana products are made of approximately 95% jackfruit and processed with canola oil, sea salt, and natural flavors to reduce cooking time. The minced variety introduces a chemical compound known as methyl cellulose, which they say works to bond all the ingredients together. Jackfruit is naturally quite meat-like. It's got these sort of fibers that resemble a shredded pork or like a pulled pork. The company raised 1.7 million US dollars in seed funding in June of 2020 and launched in Singapore in January 2021. This Hong Kong restaurant sells hundreds of Karana-based food items daily. We're based in Asia, but we see ourselves as having global potential. We want Karana to be one of the, the leading plant-based companies globally. Investors are taking notice too. We are one of the world leader in this alternative protein, which is poised to grow exponentially in the next 10 years at least. Henry Sosanto, the CEO of Filipino food maker Monday Nissan Corporation, is one of Karana's high-profile investors. Monday Nissan recently made history for a record-breaking IPO in June of 2021. It is the parent company of corn, an industry leader in alternate meats, with presence in 21 countries to date. So Santo previously told CNN that he is betting big on the alternate meat industry. Today, it is only 1% of the protein sector. So 99% is a traditional protein. Everyone is going to grow the category. In the next 10 years, this 1% is going to be at least 10%. And he's right. The industry is growing, despite making up only a fraction of global meat consumption. Uh, one report said that the industry was worth some $11 billion in 2020 and predicts it will grow to over $20 billion by 2025. And in Asia, that's inspired an entire class of food innovators to step up and bring their own plant-based meat alternatives to the market. NextGen, a Singapore-based food tech startup, launched its soy-based chicken, Tyndall, in March 2021. The company plans to expand to markets in the Middle East and the U.S. next, having raised $30 million in seed funding as of July this year. Consumers are really looking at innovation around chicken. It's as local in Japan or China or Korea as it is in the US or Brazil. Ultimately, chicken is local everywhere. Launching first in major cities across Asia, they say, is key to developing a global growth plan. We do see Singapore as an emerging hub for food tech, and we do see Hong Kong already becoming an established global hub for food tech as well. They are good representation of global cities, Shanghai-based Hao Food also makes a chicken alternative entirely from peanut protein. The company says it developed its product specifically for the Chinese consumer. They say soy and tofu have a long-standing legacy in Chinese cooking and noticed a demand for products that were not only meat-free, but soy-free too. We have a very strong connection with tofu already. So that taste of soybean reminds consumer toward the taste of tofu. And as far as we know, we're the first company that makes plant-based meat from peanut. Whether peanut, soy, or even jackfruit, analysts say that the Asian market is becoming increasingly essential for the growth of the alternate meat industry on a global scale. Asia as a whole has really become this powerhouse of all the new economic development, uh, including these uh, food industries. One need to look at not just whether Asian consumers' awareness, familiarity with these options. The other thing is 
how sustainable can it be? The tree dog is much, uh, much better to promote this uh, plant-based uh, farming practice.